Now we're on level two and the first lecture and the title today is Prayer and Answers and the Three Convictions. But before we go into level two, lecture one, I thought there's something really important that we should go over. And we really need to know this, so please try to focus. So this is kind of like a review, but in the discipleship training, level one, Uh, just to kind of review and refresh your mind a little bit, uh, the first thing that we went over in lecture one was our identity. Who we are, who I am. Uh, this is very important because a disciple needs to know who they are. We are disciples, so that's why we need to know who we are. And disciples need to know that they are workers of God and have that assurance in who they exactly are and who God called them to be. And uh, the very important thing that the Bible tells us about the identity is that our identity is we were created in the image of God. And the image of God, well, what this is telling us is that an evangelist has the authority, kind of like a king's. And that means that an evangelist and a disciple does not have any reason to be wavering or shaken because of the problems that come at them. And after we realized who we are, what our identity is, that's when we talked in the second lecture about the proof of God's existence. And this proof obviously does not come from our mind. This proof comes from the Bible, the Word of God. And the Bible tells us that the proof that God gave us that He is alive was His Son. And the Son of God, this is not just any method, it's the method that God gave us. And because God gave us this method, we don't have any reason to uh, want to experience physically uh, the method of God to try to see visions and dreams. Uh, we don't necessarily have to have those things because God gave us His method to know who He is through the Son of God. And after we reviewed that in Lecture 3, we went through the message of the concept of God. And what this message was about, uh, we talked about that there is a correct faith and an incorrect faith. And we also said that so many people in the world, people keep saying God, God, you know, they use the same word to describe God. But there are certain people in the world that know the true difference between the gods that everyone talks about and the God that uh, is our God. So that's what we talked about in the concept of God. And we talked about how uh, in this, God gave us the name of Jesus. So that was a really important content that we went over. And after understanding uh, our God, after understanding differentiating our God from the other gods, uh, we learned about the meaning of the name of Jesus. And that was the fourth lecture. Um, in the fourth lecture, we said that the meaning of the name of Jesus has two meanings, and the two meanings are uh, Savior and Emmanuel. So, uh, Jesus saving us from the Genesis chapter 3 problem, and God being with us. And then in the fifth lecture, uh, we went over that, uh, we, we talked about the gospel. And what do we say about the gospel? We said that the gospel itself is the word that God has given to us. And we said that our faith is based on the word that God has given to us. This is where our faith comes from, from the gospel of Christ. And then in lecture six, we talked about uh, through this faith, uh, through the content of the word that God has given to us, through the gospel, 
we pray and then through that prayer we can all receive the biblical answers that the word of God talks to us about and as you can kind of see here this is the word prayer and the answers and the critical thing that we need to remember is that these three things cannot be separated Because uh, they happen all together and they're uh, really, they happen together in our walk of faith. So that is what you need to remember. Uh, so today uh, we're going to confirm through the word about these three things and how they happen together. And then we're going to talk about the three judgments. But uh, going back to this, if I were to give an example to help understand how these three things go together... Um, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, um, it talks about the fruit that comes out in Genesis in uh, the Garden of Eden. So this fruit is talking about the knowledge of good and evil. And if we were to interpret this into the word, the prayer, and answers, uh, well, first God gave us the word. He said, do not eat the fruit. And prayer which would be our role, would be remembering the word that God gave us, keeping the word of not eating the fruit in our every single day lives and our walk of faith. And the answer that you receive would be not eating the fruit, the action of not eating the fruit. So, um, but the important thing is uh, the fruit. What this connects to is, uh, again, Genesis chapter 3, uh, 1 through 6. So the Genesis chapter 3 problem was what occurred after the incident of Genesis 2, 17. And after the Genesis chapter 3 problem occurred, that is when all mankind fell under the, pro the problem of separation, which was sin and under Satan who brings sin. And after the Genesis chapter 3 problem occurred, that is when uh, God gave us the word, which was Genesis 3.15, and that was uh, the offspring of the woman. And it says, the offspring of the woman will crush the head of the enemy. So this is the important word that he gave us right after the Genesis chapter 3 problem occurred. And with this word, we need to hold on to it as a covenant, and enjoy prayer and receive answers. And this is what I want to explain to you about today. So going back to the word, the prayer and answers, we're first going to start off today with the word. And we mentioned earlier that the word is the gospel. So, uh, once again, the word that God gave us in Genesis was Genesis 3.15. And once again, it says, The offspring of the woman will crush the head of the enemy. Uh, we hear this scripture many times, but we don't actually, uh, many of us don't really know what the scripture means. Who is the offspring of the woman? What is the offspring of the woman? So, the offspring of the woman is not the offspring of Adam meaning it's not the offspring of sin. And that is why uh, the Bible tells us that the child was bared through the Holy Spirit when Jesus came to this earth because Jesus was not the offspring of sin. And, I mean, this is getting really complicated, and that's because the Word of God is not something we can easily understand with their own human minds. But the offspring of the woman is that Jesus came to this earth uh, not as the offspring of Adam, which is the offspring of sin. And uh, in the Genesis chapter 3, verse 15 message, uh, God really shows us uh, that the offspring of the woman was ultimately the Son of God. And that's talking about God Himself. God came to us in the physical form, and when Genesis chapter 3 uh, explains the offspring of the woman, this is basically, once again, talking about the Son of God. 
And secondly, um, what did the Son of God do when he came to this earth? He was innocent and he died on the cross. That's what he did. And the method of worship and service that we uh, see in the Old Testament with the lamb and the blood, uh, using those things to give sacrifice to God, that is what comes from this. And that is what symbolizes the work of Christ. And after uh, Jesus died on the cross, he resurrected. So through the cross, he solved all the problem of sin. And through the resurrection, he solved the problem of Satan. And he showed the evidence that he is truly the Son of God. And that Jesus, that same Jesus is the being that gives us the filling and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And when you receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit, what happens is you receive uh, the answer of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. So you begin to live your life in answers. And these five things that we talked about is uh, what forms the very structure of the gospel. And going back to number one, when it says Son of God, uh, if we were to look at 1 John chapter 5, verses 10 to 12, it says in the word, anyone who believes in the Son of God has this t testimony in his heart. So uh, it's a little bit different for the Korean Bible because the Korean Bible says uh, the Son of God has this evidence in his heart, but uh, not believing in God, like, well, some people, they say, I only believe in God, that's it. But that's not the main point here. The main point is that uh, you truly believe in the testimony. In this case, in the Korean Bible, it says the evidence that God has given to us. That is the main key from the scripture. And that evidence, as we talked about, is God's Son. So believing in the Son of God is itself believing in God. And then after that, it says, anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar. Why does it say that? This is saying that not believing in the evidence of God, um, that is the Son of God, is not right. And many people on this earth, they don't believe either Jesus or God. That's why, uh, as we quote from the scripture again, it says, uh, made him out to be a liar. And then going further into the scripture, it says, And this is a testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has a Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. And the important thing here, the important key here, is that we don't take believing in the Son of God just lightly. Because uh, as we just read, because this is the faith that holds life. Believing in Jesus is what holds life because life is in Jesus. And um, so 1 John 5, 10 to 12 was talking about the testimony. And once again, in the Korean Bible, it says the evidence. And I'm going to give an example now. So I was in the field and I've been ministering to many different people. And there was this lady who had a husband who was a very serious drug addict. Now, uh, we've been talking about the evidence that God has given to us. But this lady, she told me after I've been proclaiming the gospel to her for many years in her life. She said uh, that her husband stopped being a drug addict. And she said her husband stopped taking so many drugs. And she said that was the evidence as to believing in God. But the important key is that our faith, the evidence that we believe in, does not just simply come from only the physical answers. But our faith is really about the eternal life and doing what God has called us to do. And I'm going to give another example. Uh, there was another mother and she had a child and her child had a pimple on their body and what they told me is that 
because that person prayed to God about the pimple and then God answered them and made the pimple go away, that is why they think that this is the evidence that God has given to them. But what you have to understand here is that Jesus is the Christ either way. If the pimple stays, if the pimple goes away, either way, Jesus is still the Christ. He has still solved the Genesis chapter 3 problem. So what you need to know is the true evidence that God has given to us. And uh, going to the next point, when it talks about, when the Bible tells us about how Jesus did the work of Christ while he was on this earth. Uh, well, there was this one lady, uh, there are many ladies, but this one lady, she told me that she was in a real rush to get somewhere and she didn't have a ride. She didn't have a car or anything, but this person came and they gave her a ride and she was like, wow, this is a true answer from God. God has given me the real evidence of uh, having this ride to get to where I need to go. And she told me herself that this was the evidence that she believed in. But the important thing is that was not the evidence that the Bible tells us about. It's not the evidence from God. And that's why we need to remember the evidence given from God is changing our identity and giving us life, which is what Jesus did for us here. And uh, what you need to know also is uh, the emphasis so all these people are putting the emphasis on many different things, but we need to put the emphasis on what God has given to us, the content of the true gospel that God has given to us. And with this content, what we need to do is uh, we need to start enjoying the blessing of prayer. Uh, so prayer, um, when we go to church and we meet with many other people, we talk to them about what we need to pray about, our prayer topics. Uh, we share with them, oh, please pray for this and this and this. But uh, there is a prayer that you need to enjoy during your personal time with God, when you're alone, when you're just with God. I mean, of course, you can pray with uh, people at your church all together in one heart for a prayer topic. But there is a really important prayer that you need to pray in your time alone with God. And that itself is a covenant prayer. The covenant prayer is taking these uh, five points of the gospel into prayer. And through the covenant prayer, that is how you can receive the true strength that God gives to you and receive the filling of the Holy Spirit. So uh, when you pray, uh, we're going to go over, uh, once again, the content of the prayer. We're just going to raise this. So in 1 Corinthians 10 and 4, it says Christ is the rock. So these three points describe the work of Christ, and it says that Christ is the rock. And then uh, when we hold on to Christ, uh, when we hold on to the rock, what happens? What happens is that the kingdom of God takes place. And then when the kingdom of God, God takes place, uh, what happens is uh, the will of God is fulfilled. And what you have to know here is that when the kingdom of God is established, that is when the keys of heaven are given and after that all uh, the will of God we talked about this earlier the will of God is to do two things when the will of God is uh, really fulfilled what happens is the darkness breaks down the darkness crumbles down and the evangelist arises uh, so uh, what we can see here is that uh, the first three points describe the rock, and the second point describes the keys of heaven, and the third point describes the gates of Hades uh, breaking down. 
And these are the true answers. Uh, not only the prayer, if we truly pray holding on to the content of the five uh, points of the gospel, these are what hap the answers that you receive when you truly enjoy the right prayer, the prayer that the Bible tells us about. And when you truly pray, once again, you will surely receive these answers from God. And I hope you can see now, uh, we've talked about the word, the prayer, and the answers. And I hope you can see that uh, this is the reason why we can't separate the word, prayer, and answers. Uh, the reason why many Christians today don't have strength is because they separate these three things. And that's why you need to really understand that we cannot separate these things because they're all connected in the same content that God has given to us. And sometimes many Christians, they uh, start caring about their own standards and they put their standards to not the content that is up here, but to their own problems. They focus everything and try to center everything based on their problems, what they're going through and try to solve their problems. But what we need to do is hurry and change our nature by going into this prayer and receiving assurance through these answers. So that is the content of the word and the prayer and the answers. And then moving on, on if we were to look at John chapter 16, verses 8 to 11. Uh, the Bible reads, And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. So to organize this, it says sin, righteousness, and then it says judgment, but uh, once again, in the Korean Bible, it says the ruler of the world. So we're going to go with what the Korean Bible says today. And the ruler of the world, the ruler of the world is Satan. And uh, so f uh, the first thing that we have to know is in John 16, 9, it says, uh, concerning sin because they do not believe in me. This is not believing in Jesus. Uh, this says that not believing in Jesus is what sin is. And that is why uh, if you don't believe in Jesus, that is called what is ignorance. And when people fall into ignorance, they all become deteriorated. And then when that happens, they become uh, insensitive. And then uh, moving on to righteousness. Uh, righteousness is talking about how uh, Jesus who was innocent died on the cross for the problem of our sins and then he resurrected. So this is talking about the work of Christ. And then the rule of the world, Satan, uh, when we look at Revelations 12 and 9, it says, So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who leads the world uh, astray. So the important key here is leads the world astray. And then uh, the second scripture that we need to look at is John 10, 10, which says the devil comes to do three things and uh, he comes to do, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And then the third scripture is that uh, it's coming from 2 Corinthians 4, 4 to 6. And this is talking about the delusion that many Christians have. Uh, what this delusion is talking about is uh, not seeing the light of Christ of the gospel. So, 
so on not knowing the light of the Christ that is of the gospel. And these are many problems that uh, the Bible tells about in John 16, 8 to 11. And um, going further into this content, if we look at Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 20, uh, well, let's first look at the Jews. So the Jewish people, that, or the Israelites, earlier in the Bible, uh, the Bible tells us that the Jews were the offspring. They were the next generations coming after Abraham. And they were the people of God. That's what the Bible tells us. So they had a tremendous background. And... Uh, but they, they had this tremendous background, but they weren't able to hold on to an important thing. Uh, in Matthew 16, uh, Jesus asked uh, the disciples, what do the people say about me? And then he says, what do you say about me? And then he talks about the three answers. So uh, first, uh, they organized it into four categories. People, some people said that Jesus is like John the Baptist. And the reason was because uh, John the Baptist was uh, known for having a lot of justice. He was known for having or making a lot of good decisions and being uh, right, I guess. And many people put the emphasis that believing in Jesus is all about being legalistic, following the rules, uh, going to justice, and that's what they put their emphasis on. And secondly, some people said that Jesus was like Elijah. They think of Jesus as Elijah. And then uh, what's important is that when they talked about Elijah, that's when they put the emphasis on power. So they said that the power was the important key in believing in God. So going back to what we talked about, the pimples, they uh, basically trying to get rid of my problems with the power of God. Well, that was what their emphasis was. And then some people said Jesus was like Jeremiah. And that was, well, what Jeremiah did a lot was he did a lot of charity service. He helped the community and he was very committed into helping the community. But what you have to know is uh, experiencing power and helping the community, helping the people around you and being uh, right is what is given as a Christian. And what you have to know is that all these people had different emphasis. Regarding how to believe in God. And some said Jesus was like a prophet. And that is because they thought Jesus had a lot of knowledge. But the important thing is that you have the true knowledge of the gospel. And uh, that's when it says, uh, what do you think of me? That's when we can refer to Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. And Matthew chapter 16, verse 16 explains what the gospel is. It says, uh, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So Jesus was the son of God. He's a prophet. And Jesus came to us to, came to the earth to die on the cross as the priest. And then he came and he resurrected. And that's uh, when he did the work of the king. And he is with us through the Holy Spirit and he guides us through the Holy Spirit. And 
when you receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you have no other choice but to uh, receive answers through the blessing of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. <clears throat> eight. And uh, what we have to know is what are the answers that Jesus talks to us about. So Jesus talks to us about the rock. And he said he will build his church on the rock. And he said the gates of Hades will not overcome it. And then he says, oh, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. So the rock is talking about having a faith that does not shake. So having a faith that does not waver or uh, having a faith that is really strong. So even if you have a problem, uh, God keeps asking you. He keeps asking us for our faith. For example, like, you know, if we have a problem, he says, are you willing to confess your faith inside this, uh, this problem? Are you willing to confess that uh, I have sent to you my son and he died on the cross and he resurrected and he guides and the Holy Spirit guides you through the Holy Spirit and um, he gives you answers through Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Are you willing to confess this faith? And he asks us, um, do you, are you going to accept me into your heart or not as your Lord and your Savior and as your Christ? And uh, what you really have to also understand is that uh, when Jesus came to us and he did the work of Christ, that is when, um, here, when he's at the work of Christ. That is when he solved the Genesis chapter 3 problem. So many people, they, they, they say, oh, yeah, Jesus is the Christ. That's uh, the good content and stuff. But what is really important is that you know the work of Christ. That Christ came because he, he uh, solved the Genesis chapter 3, 1 to 6 problem. And uh, that is what you need to know. So through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you need to receive answers. So going back to what people said, uh, Christ, who solves Genesis chapter 3 problem, uh, does not compare to what the people thought of God. So they, what they thought of Jesus. These things that are up here, these four things, cannot solve the Genesis chapter 3 problem. And the Genesis chapter 3 problem, uh, which was solved by Christ, this is what was the fundamental basis, the structure of uh, the three answers that we talked about here. And when you have faith and really build your faith on this rock, with the gospel of Christ, that is when the doors of heaven open up. So how can we open up the doors of heaven? And that is through the two uh, keys that God has given to us. The first key is through the name of Jesus and the second key is through evangelism. So, um, now we're just going to try to connect these things a little bit here. Uh, going back up here, we talked about how some people are ignorant because they're in the sin. And this ignorance is, uh, what this ignorance is talking about, is talking about not knowing the gospel that Matthew 16, 16 tells us about, not understanding uh, what the true gospel is, these, these five points that are written up here. And the Bible tells us that through this ignorance, which is itself sin, not knowing Jesus, which is sin, uh, that is what will be bringing the conviction of God. And when the when it says, or when we talked about that they were deteriorated, that is when we can connect to number one again. And we need to know that uh, the Bible says Satan leads the whole world into a stray. Many believers fail because they, uh, they're kind of like Jews. They lose a direction in the content of faith because of what they think. Keep, 
they keep thinking about my standards, my thoughts, me everything. They keep saying me self. And the third, uh, being insensitive. Uh, this is really talking about uh, we can how we can become insensitive if we don't have the right faith, the right faith that Jesus told us about and the right answers that he told us to have. So we need to become very aware of all these three things because this is the faith that Jesus talked to us about or else we may even become sinners because according to Matthew 16, uh, that's why we know this and we will be convicted if we don't know the right content of the gospel. So the important question here is that uh, the Bible, Jesus asks in the Bible, uh, there are some questions that says, who do you say that I am? And that's coming from Matthew. And Isaiah 6 says, who will go? And Ezekiel 37 says, who will make these bones come back to life? And these questions are basically asking, who will go and save the field? And uh, that is a very important question that Jesus, that God is asking you and me today. And uh, so today we talked about a lot of things. We talked about what prayer is, what the gospel is, and with the gospel, the three answers that coming that uh, really come together, that uh, really breaks down the deterioration and the insensitivity that we have. So we need to enjoy the blessing as a children of God by not just being caught by our problems, but really opening up the doors of heaven and enjoying our authority uh, like a king. So I hope you are really blessed by this message and I hope you enjoy the prayer and answers and the meaning of the three convictions.